during the day because because they were meeting such long hours towards the end. Did you ever think, uh, I think this is what he meant to say. Ding. Oh no, I didn't worry about that. Oh no. <laughs> no, because there was a recording. And okay. I, and uh, like, uh, <laughs> being and and thank goodness that there was a recording because all I took was the motions and uh, and called the roll. I didn't. It was not a verbatim uh, uh, transcript of the arguments, but they had uh, agreed to spend, and it took four days of arguing to spend four thousand dollars to have uh, the radio station be there to uh, uh, have uh, microphones and carry the the all of the debate. What, Every day. And there were people that didn't want that out on the record? No, I don't know what, they just thought it was not necessary. I, they just didn't, some people didn't think they should spend the money, but it was the greatest uh, gift that we have because since then all of that has been published. Right, and think if we had actual transcripts of the arguments of the United States Constitution yeah. going through, mm -hmm. how much, I mean, there could have been probably some things cleared up. I don't know, like the Supreme Court recent ruling or something to that extent. But, you know, I have a, I have a friend who moved here. He went to law school down in, in the States. And they had to do studies of different state constitutions in one of his classes. And he read the, the Alaskan Constitution. He said, I'm going to move there. It meant it, it was just that much contrast between the other states and, and how much people had learned and brought from other states in different different situations, so it was just amazing. So uh, now you've seen us. We we just passed our 50-year mark of being a state. Anything that you want to see happen that hasn't yet? Well, <laughs> I think that some of the changes that they've made in the Constitution, I'd like to take back. It's not the original Constitution. It was short and concise and to the point and and some of the laws the the amendments to the constitution are much too long and it makes it more difficult i think that's what some of my lawyer friends say to interpret it but um, the need for equality is it's not there yet i don't think and uh, there's a lot of people that are left out and uh, certainly uh, would like to see a broader definition of women's rights too. And the, and the native people were, fortunately, they, we had some delegates who were, spoke out, but it, it was strange to me, uh, looking back, why uh, some of those laws didn't get passed because there were some very liberal people in, as delegates. But I, I think it was because there was so much to do and it was done in such a short time. It's really phenomenal how hard they worked and, and, and how what a good constitution they wrote. I think it's an amazing constitution and, and it's such an honor to get to spend time with you and to know you and to realize how hard you well, worked was, as well. I was not a delegate. I was just the I know. clerk. But I have <laughs> but I no doubt. <laughs> I have no doubt that you had uh, a remarkable hand in all of it too. And uh, you know what? I think we should go dancing sometime. Good. <laughs> I do. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, it would. Are you going are you going to Sitka for the uh, for the Democratic Convention? Yes. Well, why don't we, <laughs> we can, <laughs> I'm going to go too, if you're uh, around on May 8th in Sitka for the Democratic <laughs> Convention, Katie and I are going to be out dancing. <laughs> and I'm going to try very hard not to get in trouble with her, I promise. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, Katie. Thank you. <laughs>
over the last 16 shows with just ordinary folk, with just, oh, I don't know, real Alaskans, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like Katie Hurley wasn't a real Alaskan. She's one of the originals, come on. So anyway, this is kind of fun, and uh, we just pulled some people out of the audience, and we thought we'd discuss some of the topics that we've been going over. Uh, Scott is here. Scott is a self-proclaimed neocon. I, I am. Yes. And he's here. And I'm very happy about it, yes. And he is, and we'll see if we can. Let's hear it for Scott. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and very nervous too. around all my, my and, liberal friends. Here. And Dean is here. Dean is the guy that if you're ever at the bottom of an avalanche, you want him looking for you. He is a, a sort of an Alaskan superhero, I think. Do you have a blue tarp cape? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I keep the secret identity pretty quiet. <laughs> OK, you need the glasses then, the big, thick, black Clark Kent yep. glasses. Ski goggles. Ski goggles yeah. will work. And then we've got Carhartt Kent down there, who is, uh, you know. You don't know. We don't know. He's we'll got work. a lot of secret identity. Anyway, all people from our audience that we've pulled in. And because there's so many different things that we talk about here on the show, and normally we just do uh, a topic, and we have experts to talk about the topic. This time, we've got not experts talking about lots of topics. So uh, follow the bouncing ball at home. So uh, first thing I want to ask you is something I asked a bunch of politicians a couple weeks ago. And the question was this. How, why do you think it is that people aren't involved in politics so much anymore? Uh, I'm, you know, and, and the fact that you're here makes you s some of the exception, I think. But a lot of people just sort of unplugged and don't want any part of it. Can't, what, do you, what makes you want to be active and what makes you think other people are just sort of ambivalent to politics? Well, I've always been involved <clears throat> from a community level, you know, Cub Scout, Boy Scout, you know, drafted, et cetera. And, uh, and mom and dad were always involved in the community. Mom doing her thing, baking cakes or something, and dad kicking people in the wallet, catching the money because he knew they had it and donated it to the March of Dimes, et cetera. So <clears throat> when you're raised like that, you're, you're uh, unbeknown to you, you are becoming a, in a member of a very important part of the community involvement. <clears throat> now, why people are uh, fed up with politics, I think was the word you used? Mm -hmm. well, I'm fed up with politics and politicians. I'd like to see someone in a recently on one of the shows suggested, a person like ourselves just out of the community, that every politician, when asked before being asked a question, should have to raise his right arm and swear to tell the whole truth, <laughs> nothing but the truth. And God, that's a great idea. And uh, we need the ability to confiscate all their assets if they don't tell the truth. <clears throat> we need to throw the criminals in jail, just like if you don't pay your parking ticket, they'll come after you or me or the rest of us. Okay, well, <clears throat> I just need to make a note that I, that I think I've got I think I figured out where I put the parking ticket I got. <laughs> oh, I want that after you, Chad. And I will pay it, <laughs> even though you were wrong to give it to me. <laughs> I just needed to make that disclaimer. Yes. Okay, what about you, Dean? I mean, you're, you're involved at a different level. I know that you do a lot of mountain rescue uh, work. Yeah, I, I do a lot of community service, but I'm not particularly political. And I think the reason people are not as engaged in politics as they were a generation back is that their lives are just so busy with all kinds of little things that they just don't have time to get involved. Do you think that it's that their lives are so busy that they don't have time to get involved or that they feel like their involvement doesn't make any difference? Well, they choose what they want to get involved in and if, you're right, if they feel their involvement won't make any difference, then they don't engage. Now, um, you, you look at the politicians around Anchorage who always seem to come out with real cushy suspect insurance settlements or a federally <laughs> subsidized job with Kabata yeah. and say. Right, or a job with Kabata and you're like, oh really, you want to listen to what I have to say at the assembly meetings? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, that is discouraging because you see that there's sort of this inside track that politicians seem to be on and we, we've got that. And what about you, Scott? Um, well, first let me say I, I believe there are a lot of people that really is probably just as well they're not involved because they don't know what the heck they're doing. So let me start out with that. 
Secondly, I think a lot of people that, that would like to be involved and, and uh, see uh, politics as something that, they, that controls their lives and that is important, I agree with this gentleman. They're just busy. People are busy, and I think also people, people are on their computers, and they're connected with everybody else. They're on the blogs, and they're doing all this other stuff, but uh, that doesn't bring them to meetings like this. It, it doesn't bring them out into, uh, into the public. It doesn't take them to places where other people are that they can sit down with. Now, they're talking to people, and they're doing their thing on the computer, but it's not the same. 